Today I prepared a battle between these two trucks, American Ford Ranger Wild Track against Samyung Braxton Sports Con. Let's begin the battle. The Ford Ranger, it has a LED headlight, LED fog light, while this Sangyong offers HID headlight with this LED based DLL. The grill design, ooh, I think it's a, a one point for the Sangyong because it has a brand new design for this new uh, sports con model. Super big, wide, very strict, looks very solid. But the Ford Ranger, it, it looks like a very uh, cute puppy nose and overall it looks a little bit narrow and taller than Sangyong and what makes it a little bit more interesting in this Sangyong Khan is that it comes with this red painted skid plate under the bumper in fact it has some off-road functionality customized option added to the original version so it comes with the skid plates it comes with this off-road tires and also the strange looking roll cage on a cargo bed it's a long car um, the front wheel you can find the cooper discovery all-terrain tire comes with the 265 60 18 inch the overall concept of this car is rugged and sporty a little bit aggressive this car comes with this additional foot step it's not designed for the, the skid plate it may be a little disadvantage when you go into the hardcore off-road but on a daily basis use i think it's always a little bit more handy to use these footsteps when you climb up this car because it's really tall car and here you have a very a special rear door design, wrap door design. So the whole panel opens up. The rear door panel extends to the end of the cabin and it opens really wide. The front door is also wrap design. So there is no risk of, you know, uh, making your clothes pants dirty uh, when you climb up this car because everything inside panel is very clean. Uh, this roll hoop bar and there's a crossbar here but the strength of this crossbar is not that solid so as you can see it's it's moving it's shaking and uh, it always shakes during the drive even on the highway 60 uh, kilometers per hour drive and sometimes it makes additional noise the foot range of wild track the front caliper is located at the back but the brake system for the real world is not the disc the drum brake yeah anyway the size of the drum is quite big enough uh, to provide enough braking force when the cargo is fully loaded the big giant door steps also it's very comfortable when you climb up this car but big difference is that this door has this parting line underneath here so when the car gets dirty you need to pay attention when you climb the car you may get your pants or skirts dirty uh, when the car is really dirty the cargo bed comes with this uh, little spoiler like garnish here uh, i think it will give a little bit better aerodynamic uh, when you go very fast okay here you can find how Khan rear view looks like since it has a very long overhang behind this rear wheel the departure angle in off-roading is not that good for this size of the car but there is one strength of this cargo bed you can stop any position you want it's very smart approach and the overall the size of the cargo bed is relatively larger than the Ford Ranger There's no damping system for this cargo door, so you need to hold up a little bit. And once you open the door, the cargo area, overall capacity of uh, the cargo system, the Ford offers 600 kilograms, the Sangyong offers 500 kilograms max. But uh, in a real world practicality, I think uh, the Sangyong will be a little bit more handy to use to utilize the whole area of the cargo bed. Both model has the rear view camera just uh, underneath this uh, door handle. Ford has the camera just under its emblem. But this Sangyong has three additional cameras. So it has one camera on each side. 
and this car has the surround view monitor function which you can find in the center display. The digital cluster looks a little bit outdated even though it has two separate digital display but um, the overall experiencing this cluster is uh, not satisfying at all and uh, most of the finish in this car very hot plastic yeah it's truck it's tough car but what I really like about this cockpit is the steering wheel feeling when you grab this steering wheel rim it feels really soft um, a little bit spongy uh, but it gives you a really good grip so I love this steering wheel the central control panels they look quite average but um, the button size are a little bit small so when you are wearing your glove um, it's a little bit tricky to click the proper buttons and especially here i don't know why they put these little 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 buttons here because they have so much space around this area other than that um the rest of uh, interior design is really practical all black uh, with little uh, orange point for the wider track and some stitches across these cushions it gives you a quite sporty feel the second row of the Ford Ranger. Oh, but this seat, it's much comfortable than I expected. The seat back looks quite vertical, but it has a proper shape uh, that wraps around your waist. So I think uh, it's better than okay. There is no air conditioner vent for the second row, but instead uh, the Ford provides two electricity ports, uh, which will be quite handy uh, when you go off-roading or go camping. The rear seat can be folded in two ways. You have extra luggage space but basically it's for tools and then you can fold down the whole seat back as a one piece but it's not full flat I need to check the Sangyong's second row this Sangyong feels much softer it has a, a thicker cushion and the setback degree is almost similar, but the overall default Ranger gives you more solid sitting position, while this one feels like uh, you're sitting on a couch. Here, um, there are two AC vents for the uh, rear passengers, which Ford doesn't have. And there is a hidden drawer underneath this second row. And it almost goes into a flat folding system and there is an extra uh, luggage space here uh, some tools are located here uh, when you want to use this uh, second row as a cargo space then definitely Sangyong gets one point here this interior looks a little bit more luxurious they added extra padding around this center fascia overall yes a little bit softer and the, uh, the leather wrapped steering wheel looks quite good instead of two separate display this Sangyong has one single digital display in the middle but it shows better resolution and the depth of the menu is much more intuitive and this one Ta -da! whether this speaker has a good sound or not just because it pops up and it can hide away I just love it <laughs> and the button layout look at this the climate control the four wheel low gear uh, selector the gear knob every design is one step forward than the Ford Ranger from inside the cabin this Ford inline four engine sounds very quiet we are um, climbing a mountain and using about 2000 rpm but still yeah, the sound itself is still dampened a lot when compared to the Sanyo. The low end torque, good to speed up here. The strength of this body structure is quite solid. How can I feel it? In this kind of very bumpy road condition, still the ride comfort is quite remarkable. And you cannot barely hear anything shuttling in this car. In this off-road, this car shows quite refined feeling. The handling character of Sangyong, the Rexton Sports Con, is not 100% safe for fast cornering because um, the rear tire easily loses its grip and it swings like a pendulum. So if you keep high pace on the corner, the rear end just keeps the uh, turning like a big pendulum 
so it makes a big giant swings but on the other hand this foot ranger every every movement is quite natural very light on the steering character so it's easy to handle safe to drive and it feels more like a proper car yeah the basic movement of this suspension the damping force and the spring rate none of them goes out of expectation so in short this foot ranger this car is quite predictable Sangyong Braxton Sports Con relatively hard to predict from time to time it may uh, show you a little bit unsafe movement uh, you can turn on the gear position display using this plus minus toggle switch on your shift knob uh, on your left digital display you can uh, show the rpm tachometers as a virtual graphic but uh, even though it has a 10 gear ratio spread uh, still the top gear gear ratio is not that low during the 100 km per hour cruising you still need to use more than 1500 rpm when compared to other brands 9 gear transmission or 8 speed transmission this 10 gear ratio does not have a specific benefit on this high speed cruising this inline four cylinder diesel engine has the bite of charger system you can actually feel quite enormous torque under the 1500 rpm the low rev torque is quite satisfying so for example i'm just driving around 90 kilometers per hour using the 10th final gear ratio and the rpm is 1400 rpm without the uh, shifting down it just pulls away quite naturally so during the mid speed range yeah I, I cannot really feel that this car has the inline four cylinder diesel um, it feels like I'm driving a six cylinder engine in terms of the braking power it's below the average since I don't have any uh, luggages on my truck bed so the car is very light condition but even with this condition when you try to brake really hard on high speed you barely feel the deceleration force <laughs> with this little tiny uh, disc brake on front and drum brake on the rear now it's time to use this uh, ADA system it has the uh, uh, radar based adaptive cruise control and uh, lane departure warning this lane departure warning system is generous so um, it turns the steering wheel back after the car actually hits the lane like this the car is always swiveling oh and it just it just crossed the lane during last 40 kilometers of the trip the average fuel consumption was 12.6 km per liter so it's about 8 liter per 100 kilometers so I switched back to this Sangyong Braxton Sports Con uh, this gearbox I, I hate this gearbox to be honest I didn't like 10 speed gearbox in the food but this 6 speed transmission in Sangyong oh I hate this <laughs> this one has 6 speed automatic transmission compared to the 10 speed automatic in Ford Ranger but the final gear ratio is not that big different so during the 100 kilometers per hour cruising the just 1500 rpm so the top gear ratio is is very similar compared to the Ford Ranger but there is also one big problem it has a six speed but it almost does not use the top gear around the speed limit on highway most of the time it, it sticks on fifth gear what makes it worse is that uh, even in this fifth gear cruising the clutch lock is not engaged properly so um, the rpm is dancing around and eventually it gives quite bad fuel economy by the way the overall comfort on this highway cruising is 
it's quite beyond my expectation. This Ssangyong has the Cooper Discovery ST tire, which is basically uh, the all-terrain tire, but it's quite acceptable on this highway cruising. There is 26 horsepower gap between two engines, but I feel that there is more than more than 40 or 50 horsepower difference. So this engine consumes way more than Ford and feels less powerful than Ford. In terms of the equipment, the game is over. The Ssangyong has almost everything you need in this car. It has cooling seat, blind spot monitoring, heated steering wheel, better digital display, wireless smartphone charger, and electric seat with the lumbar support, which Ford doesn't have. So the average fuel economy on highway the Ranger marked 12.4 km per liter, while the Ssangyong only showed 9.4 km per liter. Okay, I'm cruising around 60 kph in this twisty road. Now uh, I can feel that this rugged tire pattern is rolling on the tarmac. The steering wheel weight is a little bit light. I wish uh, it has more weight. It is light, but it doesn't mean that it's agile. There's always secondary secondary vibration through this chassis. Maybe uh, it's based on this older chassis. Or maybe the right comfort would be better when the cargo is loaded. Uh, the whole chassis tends to shake a little bit after the hitting the bumps. At the right comfort, I think Ford takes one point. Ooh! The rolling <laughs> at this Sangyong Rifton Sports, it always wants to have a lot of load transport uh, from left to right, back and forth. Whoa, <laughs> you cannot turn! <laughs> so, guys, do not even try to go with the speed into the corner with this car because, um, this tire is not designed to do such a thing and this car also is not designed to do such a thing the fuel economy on twisty road it marked 10.7 kilometer per liter so the fuel economy it's definitely win for Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger marked 13.5 km per liter. There's always about 3 km per liter difference when compared to the Ford. So um, it's because of this 6-speed stupid automatic transmission. Also, it could be the result of this Cooper discovered tire. Both cars showed better fuel economy on twisty road than this highway constant speed cruising. That means that both cars are not aerodynamic enough. Yeah, the ride comfort on off-road, it comes not only from the tires, but also from the whole rigidity of the chassis, the suspension geometry, the suspension stroke, the spring rates, everything combined. And this is a little bit disappointing. The kickback from the steering wheel is bigger than the Ford. The vibration throughout the whole chassis is also a little bit more than Ford Ranger. Yeah, I guess uh, through the camera view angle <laughs> you may find me playing around in the driver's seat much more than in the Ford Ranger. We also tested Sangyong Rexton SUV version in the earlier videos. At the time, the, uh, the ride comfort on the off-road was quite excellent. But this Rexton Sports Con, uh, uh, since it's based on the older chassis, the older version, uh, that the uh, Sangyong traditionally used for the Musso Sports, Akin Sports, It shares the same batch as Rexton, but Rexton and Rexton Sports Con, they are very different animals. I think the winner in this off-road is 
Definitely, Fort Ranger, wild track. Now I guess it's time to give my verdict on those two rivals. This Sangnyong, it has better styling, it's full of equipment, it's easy to handle, and it has a smart hatch gate, but still, I prefer this Ford Ranger wild track. It has much powerful diesel engine with twin turbo. It has a better fuel economy on highway and touristy road. The right comfort. It overwhelms the Sangyo on on-road as well as the off-road. So, after all, today's winner is the Ford Ranger. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with another interesting stories next time.